Hey everybody, welcome back to Mark's Basement Arcade EM and Chat Repair. I am Mark and you are not. Happy Father's Day to everybody. Um, I'm streaming today because well, I'm not doing anything today. I'm just chilling out at home. I got pinball to do. I have money to make, so why not? Um, let me move this real quick. Um, I figured out how to remove that thing off the bottom. So there, now I got my, what do you call it, fixed again. My chat. And I got to fix my TV. I'm hoping to get my TV back online with this stupid computer. Oh, I hate this computer. Looks like it's updating. Again. Let's see if it will do its thing. But anyways, yeah, I got um I got pinball work to do. I have pinball stuff to do. So why not um which one is it? Uh I have pinball stuff to do. I gotta get the stuff done, so there we go. Why not just be with you guys? Let's see if that works now. But anyway, anyways, um, yeah, I'm like not doing anything. And I can't see any chat that's going on. Let's see if anybody's here following me, watching. I don't expect all a big audience today, but yeah, there's just one, which is me, I think. But like I said, I got to get some stuff done. Oh, we got an ad, so I'll turn that down. Anyways, what we're going to do is I have one stepper left to rebuild. Um, I got to get this flipper taken apart and re-sleeved, cleaned up. I did get a new buzzer, courtesy of Dave's Arcade. If you don't know who that is, please um, check out Dave's Arcade on Twitch and YouTube. Sorry, I don't have a link for that. But why is my thing doing weird stuff? All right. That looks good. I think my computer is stuck in an update again. So what do I need to do? I need to go to my Firefox. Go to here, go to Twitch. I have to resubscribe myself. Ah, here we go. Resubscribe. Use Prime Sub. Resubscribe. I don't know if I'm glitching or not, or if it's just my um, connection on my computer. So I'm sorry if um, I am glitching. There we go. That should pop up. Thanks myself for um, joining in. Anyways, um, let's get back to here. I hope I'm not glitching around too much. Um, if I am, I'm sorry. But anyways, let's get to this. Um, I want to get one of these flippers apart right away. And get these rebuilt if I can, um, which shouldn't be too hard. I just got to put my sleeves, my new um, sleeves back in. Well, those are actually still the original ones, but they're in great condition. I looked at them really good. 
I went through and checked everything on them and they are perfect. I compared them to a new one with a new flipper and there's nothing wrong with them. So what I did is I just cleaned them up and we're throwing them back on. But the bushings are, like I said, in perfect shape. There's no issues with them. So they're not cracked or anything like that. So why replace them? There is no reason to. But. So we're just gonna put them back together. But we do got new sleeves. We got a new linkage. And what else do we have that's new? I think it was just my browser that was um, acting up. So I'm doing a lot of stuff on that computer. I got OBS running, uh, Twitch going, my laptop going. So me, hopefully it was just uh, the original buzzer still. Cleaning up the OBS, I'm mean, not the OBS, the EOS connections. Oh, look at that. That is just nasty, dirty. Just kept cleaning the, the EOS switch. It's in great shape. No reason to uh, put a new EOS in it. If this was. A uh, customer game where they paid me to rebuild it. They would get a new EOS switch. But this is, it's still my game. I'm rebuilding it. But, so it's just getting this, it's getting reconditioned. There's nothing wrong with the EOS switch so we're not replacing it. Coil stop is bad. I gotta find a new coil stop. Hopefully I got some. Uh, this computer is doing something stupid again. Okay, let's open up. Um, fire phonics. Coil stop. I believe I have a couple coil stops. I'm probably going to have to order more. I think I got three. Or these. Or these. I don't know which ones they are. Or these. So I do have coil stops. Let's buzz you out a little bit more. Let's see what we have here. These are good. They're just they're pull-offs which I should take them. That, why am I saving that one? Jeez, that's garbage. Okay, these are good, but they're filthy. So we're gonna have to take those and rock tumble them. They are pull-off ones, which means they were on a game that were perfectly good. But the I took them off. I think these are brand new ones. Okay, so we're going to get two of these. Sometimes if you've got coil stops and you're taking apart some parts and the coil stops are good, you just save the coil stops. Why throw them out? 
I'll throw this over here. So that's what those are. They are takeoffs. You take them off and you just reuse them. And in my laptop, I have to do. I have to turn that on so my screen doesn't keep turning off. But yeah, they, these quail stops are garbage. I will show you what I mean. That one was loose. This is going to be fun now. Because I took the front off and now I'm taking the back off. Now I got to put both of these together and wiggle them the right way so they're straight with each other. Because now they're going to be crooked. Which is okay because this one I can tell was put on crooked to begin with. So which is good. All right. Coil stop. See, it's just it's mushroomed. It's bad. New one. There we go. See how that new one's perfect, and this one is mushroomed. That one garbage. Let's clean this bracket and everything off. Hopefully, all oh, this coil stop came out beautifully, which is good. Here we go. Uh, power and sleep. A little nap though. One plugged in, turn off, never. I'm just setting my um, laptop so the display doesn't turn off while well, I'm trying to watch Twitch on my laptop. But yeah, happy Father's Day if anybody is watching now or if you're going to watch later on, tomorrow or next week or whenever you choose to watch so the good thing is it's getting a new coil stop which is perfect the rest of the um, plunger looks in great condition so we don't have to worry about that is just disgustingly dirty. Look at that. That was just nasty dirty. Alright. Along with my hands now. Hands are also dirty. These links were good, weren't they? Yeah. It's funny thing, these are in perfect shape, but the coil stops are just destroyed. Funny how that goes. Now we're going to put the new sleeve in. Now, here's the trick. Here's that bracket. Doesn't really matter which way it goes. You can go that way, or that way, or that way. But we have to get the coil stop on lightly so we can um, adjust it along with uh, the front coil stop I guess I call it a stop too I guess it would be more like a locator I yeah, got a little movement in that. And then this front bracket. I'm going to put the coil on first. Get that. 
Now we'll put this front bracket on. I know you can't see it too good. I'll try to spin it around as soon as I get some screws in it. Get her loosened just a little bit. Alright, now what I'm going to do is this coil, I can twist it back and forth a little bit. We don't want that. We want this to be as straight as possible. So I'm going to squeeze it like that to get this front bracket and this back bracket tight and straight, which is going to hold the coil in there straight. And then I'm going to tighten down the front bracket. There. Now that front bracket is tight, now I can take the back bracket and tighten it the rest of the way. Now the coil is in there perfectly straight the way Williams intended it. There. Now it's perfect. So you got that little bit of movement like it normally has. I think I can get some of that out. I don't know. It's easier to do this front one versus that back one. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it out or not. I know I'm blocking you, but I can't help it. There. How's that now? There. Now we're tight. This is just harder to get than that one. So now we'll put the two screws on the bottom. After this, we will go and do the stepper. So there's other things I can rebuild on here that I already rebuilt. But I figured, you know, what the heck. If I got time, I'll do the other ones too. There. Now that's all done. Now we'll just set it down and start putting the screws back in to the play field. I was actually going to stream yesterday, but I had too much stuff going on, and then I had a graduation party to go to. But I did make a video and put that on Mark's Basement Arcade. It was um, a video I did on polishing that travel time. And... I can't be on here all day today because I have to cook for myself because that's what we do on Father's Day is come on get in there is we cook our own meals while we take our wives out for their meals and these is that gonna no, it won't because it will come right back out. So, but yeah, I did rebuild these. You can see it's got new links on everything. Like I said, these is in great shape. The plunger. It's in great shape. It's doing what it's supposed to do. But we'll save those for another day. I'm actually going to put these under here because later on I'm gonna work on more of this.
All right. Let's move some of these things. I'm going to try to move you to the other side of the basement. Well, not really the other side. The other side of where I'm working. Let me get more of this extension cord. Just want to be tripping over it. That works. We're going to be rebuilding a stepper. That's the stepper we're going to be rebuilding. That's going to be fun. Now, this is a step up. You can see how it's getting slow. Yeah. Okay, now we're at the end of it. As you can see it's not going anymore. Now this will reset. So it's a full step up reset stepper. That means it steps up and it does a full reset. It doesn't step down, which would be like, you know how it was going dit, 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 dit to go up? A step down stepper would then go dit, 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 dit down this one um, it will step up as it needs to and then do a full reset so which is kind of cool and interesting all at the same time so let's do this let's see we got the buzzer right away let's clean this one contact At least out of our way right now. We don't have to worry about that now. And I want to mark that flipper just so I know I rebuilt it. So I was looking at this and I couldn't tell what the hell I did on certain things. And then I realized, hey, I did rebuild some of that stuff. Okay, now I need my camera. And, like always, take pictures. Oh, that thing's driving me nuts. I upgraded my um, stream deck, and now it, it keeps messing with it and opening a browser all the damn time on my computer. Um, all right, as you can see, we are going to take a picture of how this is, and we are reset all the way. Let's take a picture on this side. I'm going to mark this side too. Let's take a picture like that. I need to mark that side so I know where the home is. Is it going to do it again? Um, we'll find out. I will show you exactly what I'm going to do. Let's get my screwdriver out. And we'll disconnect the stepper from the play field so we can tilt it back easier. It just makes a easier work area. This was a more violent stepper, so it's got six screws. That hold it to the play field versus the blast off I was working on that had four screws to hold it to the play field. Which I thought was kind of crazy, but apparently back then they didn't have an issue with these being so violent. Alright, and it did do that. Close that up. Go like that. So this is going to be home position. I like doing this one. I'm going to mark it here and here and um, here. There. This way I know 
when I take this off, this has to line up with that line. It has to, because William says it has to. Now I'm going to show you my trick, which if you have watched me before, you know what my trick is. I'm going to put the screwdriver in through the hole here. This will only let this gear spin a little bit and then it will like lock it so we can get this nut off. There. Otherwise you cannot get that off. Got a nut, a washer, and that's it. This is in pretty good shape. There. As you can see, how that went through there like that. Now, we'll get that stuff out of my way. Now we're going to count how many turns we can get on this spring right here. We're getting one. We're getting two. We're getting three. Three turns, which is typically normal. We don't have to remove this to get this off, which is nice. All right, so let's get these springs off. Actually, I think I'm going to clean all this stuff as I put it away. That way I won't have to clean it again. These, I hold my finger on it. And I go like that to clean the contact. This way you don't bend the fingers because if you just went like this you just constantly bend them. This way I'm putting pressure on it with my finger. I'm getting the contact cleaned and I'm not bending it. There. That's done. Clean out of the way. Now let's pull the spring off here first. And this one sits in a groove on the shaft. There. Right here on the shaft, it sits in a groove. Sometimes you get to kind of peel it out of that groove there and then it will come right out like that and then we'll get that washer off too and the sleeve and then we'll set them over here where are we we'll zoom back out i wish i had two cameras well, i do got two cameras i need to redo my stuff and i need to get a different um adapter for my computer just to make everything a little smoother and easier. Just for me. Um, Q-tip. Now we got one of those right away too. Just back over here. Clean this off. Get in here. Clean this out. Why am I doing it wrong-handed? Clean that inside out. Dirty. It's old grease and stuff. Clean that out. We'll take this. Clean the outside of it off. With the naphtha. That's all I'm using is naphtha. Clean the spring off. I usually clean the springs because people spray grease on everything. Back in the day, they didn't know how to keep these things working, so they greased them, which is okay. We'll get this top spring here off. Do the same thing. 
hey, at least they were keeping these machines alive, you know. They might have been put working on them wrong. They didn't know. They didn't think these things would be alive as long as they are. And how technology and everything has advanced. So, hey, they were doing what they were doing to keep them alive. So, I can't blame these guys. But I can blame you if you throw a WD-40 on it right now. I can totally blame you for that. Only lubricants we're going to be using is this Super Lube. You can get it at um, Harbor Freight or online. And the Super Lube, this is a liquid. This is the paste, the grease. We're using this and this. And that's it. Now we're going to bring it this one shift here off. Little e clip. Keep your fingers on it. Because that thing can fly. Take that, wipe it off. Throw that into parts. This will just come straight out. Normally there's something over here covering all that, but not today. Hey, what's up, Jeremy? Happy Father's Day. Thanks for popping in. You've been busy. I've been busy. Everybody's been busy. I am extremely swamped and busy and haven't been able to go anywhere. Um, I was at Bounce the other night, but I haven't been able to do anything. I'm trying to recuperate from a lot of like hours have been cut at work so I've been doing a lot of um, video rebuilding stuff in the basement where I've been rebuilding stuff and just been keeping to myself because you know, I just need to um, you know take time and get the stuff done so I have um, this is triple action um, that is a blast off this is a uh, travel time and then over the, well you can't really see it it's behind the TV there's a comet and then there's a Hollywood heat so yeah I've been extremely busy or I can't do anything too much anymore and then when I do do something I usually just, I like, I'm just mental nothing, where I don't want nothing to do with pinball. So, yeah, I've been trying to catch your stream, but I just haven't had the time. I've just been working. And it's summer, so I'm doing house stuff. Right now I put naps on here. I want to clean this joint up because you can't take this apart because it's a pressed fitting. So, oh, yeah, I got to cook cook on the grill after this. So as soon as do I'm done with this, um, I'm just cooking hamburgers. I'd love to have a New York strip. So you enjoy that thing. You totally enjoy that. You deserve it. All right, and then we'll get a Q-tip. Clean other things. Yeah, I had um, reduced hours at work. So, um... I'm kind of in a hole a little bit with cash situation. So I'm tr trying to get a couple machines done and then I'll be out of the hole. As soon as I get this blast off done and um, travel time, I mean, tra well, tra travel time too. Travel time is already paid for. Um, but uh, triple action, once I get those done. I should be out of the hole. But, yeah, it wasn't fun being on reduced hours for a while. You know, when you're used to a 40 hour check, and then you don't have a 40 hour check. It was very good. Oh, you're so lucky. We made, um, we didn't make steaks on a girl. What did we do last time? Oh, we got Sendex hamburgers. I don't know if you got Sendex by you. I don't know if they're just local in our area, 
but the um it's just a uh a, a more of a like a top end grocery store but anyways they um they make their own um blended hamburgers with like different stuff in them and they're like really gourmet you know, we usually go there just for the hamburgers and that's what we cooked on the grill last time was those and this will just pull right out and let's get a new clean spot but yeah man the steak would be awesome i did cook a steak on a grill I'm, I'm, i can't lie about that i had one that was in the refrigerator that got freezer burnt really bad and i was like gonna toss it forever and i'm like well let's why don't i just cook it up and cut it up in pieces and give it to the dog but that steak was like seriously freezer burnt bad and when I cooked it, it actually, it didn't taste bad at all. It tastes just like an unseasoned piece of meat because I didn't season it because I was going to give it to the dogs. But it was, it didn't taste freezer burnt at all. So I'm like, man, these dogs are getting a nice steak. Oh, Dave told me um, you sent him a light bulb. I was just talking to him on one of my mental don't do anything days which was Friday I went to bounce and I was talking to him and he said that um he was talking to you about your game that you have that's just like the one he's working on him and you sent him a bulb and was helping him with um a couple things it should make it in one piece I know you, so I know that it was packed really good. All right, we got this cleaning up. Now my computer has got Apple software update popping on it, so I can't even see my laptop now. So let's um, close that. Close, come on. Oh, now it's got a spinning yellow. Whoops. Close the program. I hate this laptop. Hey, it closed. Yay. All right. So let's take this. And I'll take the green scrubby. I'll go along the shaft like this. Just to give it a polish. Yeah, um, Dave contacted me about that game too. And I ended up sending him a... Uh, I think it was like a five or six stack relay thing for the, the motherboard. Well, not really the motherboard, the relay board on it. He had one that was nuclear melted down. And I happen to have an extra one. So I gave it to him. Helped get that machine working. You know and I know. Neither one of us wants to see a machine dead. We both want to, to be living again. All right, so we got that out. Let's get this one off. Get this one clean too. And none of us want to see a mach machine parted out unless it absolutely is just too far gone. I've fixed machines that people would have parted out. That Lucky Ace I did a few years ago, that was a parts game to most people. But to me, it was a, a challenge. And that game, it doesn't look great, but it plays like brand new still. Alright. This is almost clean enough. I just gotta get a Q-tip. Yeah, I like a challenge too. I don't like too much of a challenge. I like a challenge, but sometimes it's like, uh One of those challenges where you, uh, you take a break for a a week or two and then come back to it. Those ones I don't like too often. But I get them once in a while. I'm sure you get them once in a while too where it's just like, okay, what am I doing wrong? And then you step away and come back because you forgot what you did, but you know what the problem is. And then you look at it and you're like, duh, right there. And then you find it. There we go, that's clean. I had that with that, um, what do you call it? Uh, Skylab I had. 
for a customer. It was randomly adding more balls. Normally it would start a five ball game. Every now and then it would start a 10 ball game. I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on with it. I just tore that game apart several times over and over and over and I couldn't figure it out. Finally I walked away from it, came back to it, looked at it, researched it, and found out I had a magnetized coil. And that's all it was, was a magnetized coil. Because it was just holding in and when not letting go during the startup sequence so it would do it twice and give you um, 10 balls sometimes instead of 5. I normally don't set games on 10 balls I mean on 5 balls but when the customer wants their game on 5 balls they get 5 balls but I have talked a couple customers into 3 balls and I showed them how to put it to five balls. I said, if you don't want five balls, here's how you go on three balls. But trust me, after you play the three, three balls enough, you'll want it on three balls. And sure enough, they said, yep, there's no way we're gonna change it to five balls, because three balls is too much. Get that coil off too. That's like that. All right. And then uh, also on that Skylab too, I had another switch that was magnetized that would give you extra points. So when in, like I can't remember what relay it is. Let's say it was a thousand point relay. Um, when that would kick in, sometimes you would get two thousand points. Sometimes you get five thousand points. Sometimes you get 10,000 points off of it. So that was another relay that was energized. And didn't want to not get energized. I can go there. All right. This one we're going to have to do a little work on. I have to go get my file. And it will need a replacement coil stop. To this one is mushroomed kind of good here so I'm going to take my file and we're going to file the mushroom off of it and then we will put a different coil stop on it because this one is just garbage but I want to clean it off first put that there and while well, I got this I will clean off all this gunk off of here. I'm going to have to get a new towel too and clean this off a little bit better. And this screw right here, always everybody, if I can get it in, there's this screw here with the wire on it. Always make sure that is tight. That is a unnecessary thing for the stepper to work properly. Yeah, I gotta get my file and I gotta wipe this stuff off with a newer towel. Let's get the file. All If you any got any weird problems like that, Jeremy, look at your relays. That's probably what it could be. It could be a, a stuck relays. All right, have a great Sunday, Jeremy. Take care. Thanks for popping in. All right, garbage. We are going to take the mushroom off this. End of the coil stop. This is just a fine metal file. I am slowly spinning this as I'm filing.
as you can see how I'm filing it, I want to make a bevel. A bevel on it. There's a good screwed up part right here. Right in here it doesn't. Let's do it this way. This will also silence the coil a little bit too. What it will do, instead of smacking it flat, it'll have like a little cushion on the edge of it, which will silence it up a little bit. If you look at these, like this one right here, I don't know if you can see it really good, but it does got that slight little bevel to it. And that's what we're just going to do with this one. Put the bevel back. As I said, I'm slowly turning this as I am filing it. So I don't like stick on one spot. Except for a couple spots I did. I was hanging up on them. Oh, I think that's beautiful now. All right, that is good. So what I'm going to do? Take my drill. I'm going to put this in my drill. Grab a different piece. And then I'm going to hold it tight. And get a nice polish on that. Look at that, that is pretty. It's got the nice bevel on it. It's rounded just a little bit right on the edge. It's clean. And it's gonna work properly again. That's how to do it. Now we gotta find a coil stop that matches that. All right, um, coil stops. I believe it was one of those dirty ones I had. Yep, it was. Well, we're going to have to clean one real quick then. I'll take the nicest one, which is here. That's exactly what that is. It's a takeoff, and we're going to clean it, I guess. Clean it off. Did I buy these used? I might have bought these used. No, these are new. They're that's it. These were new old stock, but they just were, you know, a little bit rusty. And now I remember they were just a little bit rusty, so that's why I got them cheap. Now you know why it's a buzzer. 
So that's why. Okay. Just want to get that as clean up as I can. But the other ones I'm going to throw in a rock tumbler and clean them up. Let me put those on my computer. We have two left. I'll have to order some more. All right. Let's get a new towel. I didn't even grab any um, Arnold Palmer. All right, just get that out of the way. We'll clean this area up again. Get a better job on this coil. Maybe I should wash my hands too. Yuck. All right, this one garbage. Got two good ones now. Need two sleeves. New sleeves. Alright. There's the little one. There's the big one. Take this. Put that in there. I don't know how good you can see me. Is if you were pointing that way, it'd work better. Like that. Get a new sleeve that doesn't look, I mean, no new coil stop. New one that just doesn't look that pretty, but it's new. Get that on there, and then we'll tighten it down as soon as we get it. There we go. Now we'll hold it tight, like what we did with the flipper. Now we'll tighten it down. There, we'll do the same thing with this one. Get that there. And push this right up through bottom. I'm blocking you probably. But I can't throw it in another way. I almost wish I had another photographer here with me. That'd be kind of cool. There's no way any of my kids or my wife would volunteer for that job. To sit down here for two hours and move a camera around. might actually yeah. she might mostly not all right let's get that cleaned up which is the same thing let's get a new one where was that new one I had here it goes not in the right spot green scrubby what more can I say as you can see, it's already getting nice and clean. I'll be coughing any second now, probably, because just the dust that this creates usually will make me cough. Today it's not. Watch, I'll just break down and just start coughing like crazy soon. Some of these steppers, if you watch how they go around, they don't fully go around. You really don't need to clean them all the way if it's your own machine. However, I usually do because it just looks better. The customer doesn't know that it 
it doesn't work on these parts. However, it just looks good when you open it up. You see they're all clean. That's good. Let's wipe that off with the clean end. So now you know why I make that mark so far. It's because you usually end up wiping it off. And it's like almost completely gone. Q-tip. I have to clean out that, yeah. <coughs> there we go. I don't think this will be that bad. Nope. Because that shaft was in good, clean condition. A lot of times these being gummed up will um, make them work bad. A lot of times. And those were kind of gummed up. All right, um, I gotta get my hand soap and clean my hands off. They're just too dirty right now. This is just some purple power junk. It was 65 cents. So I bought all of them at the parts store one day. This is just perfect for what I'm doing here. I just want to get the, my hands cleaned up for this last part that I'm doing. Because I think it would be a little more beneficiary or beneficial that I got clean hands with clean parts or cleaner, oh, dryer's on. Cleaner hands with clean parts. All right, that is done. All right, now we're gonna take super lube. Put a big glop on my finger. That's a big glop. I'm going to take it and smear it all over these contacts. I'm just going to cake them with grease. There. They're all caked. Rub it in really good. Rub it all into the pores of the metal that I can. Take this. I'll get some excess and rub it on the shaft of this. And I'm gonna take my towel and wipe all this off. And what I usually do, I usually do this, I always do this, but I like to spread it around on the outside, all the way around it. Then it kinda like makes it look brand spanking new, the whole thing. Now that I cleaned it off, what I did was I left a microscopic layer of grease on all those contacts. So that's all like cleaned. Let's do one thing. Before we go any further, I need to take that other buzzer out of the box and get that working. All right. It's going to be easier for me to do this. Put the switch back in. Put this out of the way, kind of. I think. I'm hoping. 
Maybe. I don't know. Um, let's do that real quick too. These are clean. I put a blue mark on them. Yeah, they're tight. Yep. Yeah, that one I'm gonna have to fix. And let's do that real quick too. Let's fix that socket. too far. Yeah, that's fixed. What I did was I soldered the socket to the base. And that keeps it from being a spinner. fixed and that there now I got some little stuff out of my area that I got cleaned and I know is clean now all right since we got this clean let's take this gear and put it back now this nub that's right here let's zoom you in a little bit the nub on this gear is gonna rest inside this hole and I'll show you why See how that nub is there? It's gonna go all the way around and see, it keeps it from going any further. And that's exactly what you want. Um, yeah, everything else I can put back on. Now we'll put this back on. Remember we marked it so we know where our top is. washer get our nut now remember how I took it apart I put that screwdriver in there I don't have to now because that nub that was on there is resting against that spot and it won't let it turn there I feel that's about good You don't need to crank that down tight at all. Actually, I recommend you don't. All right, now this, we're gonna oil this up. Let me get a new towel. One thing about pin mail repair I recommend is having a lot of towels around you for cleaning. We will take this and we're gonna use that super lube in the pen. We're going to get it behind where the two pieces meet in several spots like that. It's the only time we're using this. So you can cover it back up right away and put it away. I highly recommend you cover it up so you don't leave it lay sideways and drip everywhere. I'm just kind of working that in. Fly. 
And that's why you cover up your pinball machines near your work area. There. Now that's in really good slippery working condition. Take that, put that there. Put that. Like that. Let's get this up here first. There. Put that there. E-clip. Always give her a spin. That way you know it's doing what it needs to do. We're going to take a little bit of grease. We didn't put any on this shaft because it's plastic. No plastic on grease. Get a little bit. We'll put on this shaft. There's a couple little spots right here. They rub on each other, metal to metal. Um, right here, I put a little bit right there, and a little right there, a little bit here, and a little bit right there. Because that, and then a little bit right here. It's just, my fingers basically dry with that. like that and a little bit of that pivots on there and then this will go right like that that washer will go there the big sprig it's got a little hole here a big hole here big hole goes down there it catches in a groove we were talking about and that goes over here, on there. This spring will go across the top here and over to here, like that. Now well, we said we had um, four winds, right? Three. Three winds we had, I lied. So we're gonna go one, two, and three and hook it back up. Right like that. Now we should have it working perfectly. And we're, we're still a little bit slow. Yeah, I don't like that. Is it because we're on sideways? Yeah, well, when we were bumping stuff, I will do it every time, I guess. And I'm not giving it a slam. If you do this little, what I'm doing here, the coil does not operate that way. And when I was holding it on an angle, there we go, we got a little, little, Rig. But however, that works with a slam. So it's working properly. So it's got to get a slam to work. It needs that slam. If you do that baby little thing like I was, you're not going to get it to work right. It, it can easily throw you off. You'll think to yourself, man, this thing isn't working right. But you got to get that slam. But the other thing I can do too, I'm going to loosen this nut on the back just a little bit. There. That was it. I had too much tension on the back spring. And that's the other reason why you'll get a little sticky like that. So you back off. I had it too tight back here. I had that too tight. And when I had that too tight, 
it was binding everything. Same with these. You, sometimes you can bend these. That one's kind of tight itself. You can bend these and get them too tight where they rub on here really hard and make your mech stick. And that's what we had. We had um, a couple minor stupid things that I did which made everything stick. So let's put this back where it belongs. Tight it down a little bit so we can get both sides started. And just push the whole play field. This is so much easier to do when you're not on camera, trust me. Because I'd be standing right where you're at. You're actually in my way. I'd be standing right where you're at doing this job. But since I want to show you how to do what I do, I got you in my way. screw there actually I don't like that one it just seemed to go too quick so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do a quick hole fix Um, toothpicks, wood glue, and uh, needle nose pliers. Take that, figure about how deep the screw is, which is, yeah, it's close to that deep. I don't think it's that deep, so I'm going to take this a little bit more off of it. There. About how deep it is. Um, we'll put that down for right now. Get the wood glue ready. Get that out of the way. I like using this really old wood glue because it's so thick. I don't have to worry about it leaking all over if I spill it over. That's what happens with wood glue when it's really, 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 really old and you leave it open a lot it gets thick but the thing that's nice about it too it sticks to the wood like this yeah. stick that into the hole wipe that off put it on the table close this back up but yeah this is probably like umpteen years old doesn't even have a date on it. Surprised it doesn't have an expired date on it like everything else does. You buy bottled water and it expires in two years. Honey expires. How can honey expire? I don't like that better. How can honey expire? You can literally find that in ancient Egyptian tombs and eat it. It's one ingredient. It's honey. It doesn't expire. Alright, what do we do today? Um, we have two of our steppers done, which we need to mark. These have both been rebuilt, yes. Now I'll mark the top of the coils too. No way I can see it there. Those have been rebuilt. We did one flipper. We did one slingshot. Um, we went through some of these switches that are kind of in the way, kind of not in the way. Um, those I got to dig out. I got them near me. 
are all nice nice and cleaned with um, ultrasonic cleaner let's put those back in going along, plugging along for a little bit, getting stuff put back, it's got to get put back anyways, why not do it now, can see how I do things. See what I'm doing? And that one stripped. And that one stripped. That one has ones. This one looks like it is. No, it isn't. These two are. Screw holes. All right, might as well just show you how I'm gonna fix them. Again, cute um, toothpick. I break the pointy ends off when I do this. I just use the, I don't like the pointy ends for some reason. So I'm gonna break about this much off each one. We'll put that back. So there you can see about what I use for each one. I won't need that anymore because we're done with that. Take the glue off again. Grab these right by the edge. And then look at that like that. This is really awkward to do, so I'm trying to show you. There we go. Get the blob on there. Stick that in a hole, like that. Get the next one. I said that's what's nice about this wood glue. It's so thick. Let's stick that in there. There. I'll wipe the end of this off again. That's how you do it. Some people like to stick the toothpicks in. Let them dry and then break them off. I don't. They're wet, which is great. When I put that screw in, it's going to force the glue, smash it right into the pores of the wood, and it's going to bond everything good now. are repaired. Let's get this last one here. Help 
works if I plug it back in. I use my soldering iron and I plugged it in to a, a different spot. The reason why I'm taking such a long time on that is because um, that buzzer needs a new um, 443 bit on it. So since it's not in the best shape, it's very knocked down a lot. I'm trying to hit it as good as I can with the last little bit of fibers that are on the brush. As you notice, I put the screws back. As I took them out, it's just, I find it makes it a little easier on this stuff to do that. Now let's get some cool light bulbs. Um, I don't want them. through my box. Here we go. I want these. These are just regular Comet um, Warm White flexible ones. I don't want the non-ghosting. These won't ghost. Um, let's do this. Let's clean these two switches first. buzzer is on its last buzzes people. I will have to order some more of these too. These, I like using these because they just shine good and light up these so nicely. I try to point them down towards the play field because that's kind of like how you're looking at them so that's kind of how I try to get these try to put them in the same spots so they light up exactly the same so they don't look like one's weirdly lighted versus the other. As you can see, I got them all kind of like in the exact same spot. Keep them away from your switches. This one's got to get a little adjusted. Won't we use the proper tool for that, Mark? To make these switches tighter, I will show you what to do. First let's close these up and get them out of the way. Put them back. If I can get that out of the way. There. There. Um, to make these switches tighter, this bottom leaf, which is actually touching the plastic, you bend that down. And that will tighten up this the switch if it's loose. Which I'm doing. Now the 
the top one. I'll bring that down a little bit. This one's got a twist to it, which I do not like. So I'm going to twist it the other way. There. It was kind of um, doing it on an angle like that. So I took it and I twisted it more that way, so now it's flat again. And they're all working good. And these ones. Um, we have these for them. they are um, these type of rollovers that are like this it's a two-way rollover let's the ball roll forward and backwards this one I know automatically is out, out lane because let's tighten these up so you can see better this one right here I know it's out lane it's out lane switch because it only lets the ball roll one way so when you um, drain it will roll over this like that, but it won't let the ball come back. So this I already automatically know it's out lane. This one right here I know is for the the trough, the bottom of the trough. Right there. It's the bottom of the trough. It's just the way this is designed, I know it is. And then another out lane. So that leaves us with these two. And the only spot that they can go is right up here. So let's put those up there. Which, I'll take the screws out. switches will both go right back, 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 right back where they started from. I have to get the sleeve up, the paper up first. There's actually a piece of like um, fish paper underneath them. Which that didn't help. Come on. Yeah. Get up there. And now go down there. Get that fish paper up. They put that there for a reason. I guess they didn't want to switch. They accidentally touched the metal in any way. These. I put them in a rock tumbler. See, I can roll over both ways with the ball. I put those in a rock tumbler and they just come out beautifully clean. Let me get right back to where we started from. Love is good. Love can be strong. We gotta get right back to where we started from. There. screw so yeah with these things um, I like putting them take them out right away so you can polish the play field put them back in take the switches rock tumble them this way after you're done polishing the play field the screws are in the right spot you don't have to guess which ones they are and you're done Look at that, now we're just like working our way down. We should um, try to get, I'm gonna have to work on those otherwise without you here because these are just in a horrible spot and I'm gonna swear trying to clean them. Um, I think we did bulbs, we did clean bulbs. 
So, uh, I don't know what else to say too much, except for my phone. One for ding ding. Oh, my buddy Mike is an happy Father's Day on a text, which is very nice because he hasn't been answering my texts. Um, I think that's about it. Let's um buzz this relay over here right away. Let's go through and buzz that clean. Working our way down, might as well. Adjustments needed. There. Let's do this one. Where are we? Oh, right there. Let's do that one right away, too. The more I do now, the more I gotta do later. one that one was a pain and about to get to um, will it be easier if with a screwdriver Okay, this thing's freaking me out. It keeps moving as I push the button. Perfect. There. Just marking things. Just marking them. I rebuilt that too, so I marked it. I haven't been on this for a while, so I couldn't remember exactly what I did. I'm like, let's do the pop bumpers. And I'm like, well, there was one done. Another two are dangling. So I'm going to do those later on tonight. Um, a lot of these things I'm going to do later on tonight. Um, we rebuilt just about everything on here. The next thing we're going to have to do is take this and put it in a cabinet. Well, we're going to flip her over and redo the play field. But I think I'm going to, this week, I'm going to go through, let's do this. This week, I'm going to go through the top of the machine and just go through and do everything, get everything done on it. Um, we rebuilt this and we rebuilt that. Um, there's nothing else for me to show you on this. That we didn't rebuild. And that is like all out of whack too. I don't know how that happened. Let's fix that. Um, this is out of whack. I don't know how the hell that got out of whack. I don't know if you can see it. You can't. Right there. That switch. It's just totally out of whack. Um, this one side is just bent to crap. Don't 
how that happened. But we're going to straighten her out as good as we can. Um, wow, that thing is just, just mangled. I don't know how good you can see it. That switch is just like really mangled. to get it so it's not touching but close to touching so it does do its job but we're also bent right at the top it's not easy to do I gotta bend the middle one over a little bit. Bingo. Bingo. Make those a little closer to each other. Really needs to be done is this whole thing just be taken apart and everything just bent flat again there let me fix that um, that one was bent like way over there it wasn't going to do it any good I don't know how that got so whacked and why I didn't see it but it's fixed, it's correct now, which is good. I wonder if I did that by moving something around. I don't know. I don't know at all. But I do know. Um, that's about it for this. So yeah, um, we rebuilt, yeah, we did rebuild everything. Um, I'm going to rebuild the rest. We got a flipper done today. We got the other stepper. We went through two relays. We showed how to put the lane guides back in. The rollovers, well not the lane guides, the, um, the rollover metal switches, um, the plastic rollover switches. Um, yeah, I just have to um, get the all this junk out of my way and um, put two pop poppers on um, do one slingshot rebuild three drop targets pull this all off get all the bulbs underneath and then um, be done I got a couple bulbs around here too which are easier to get off when you take this whole mech off you can get to the bulbs Put the mech on. I think I'm gonna do this side, spin her around, and then do the outside. Because all these bulbs here, I can get better if I take this play field and flip it around this way. So the top is at the bottom and the bottom's at the top. I think that will work better for me. Ooh, let's not do that. Oh, yeah, you can see my mouse. So yeah, there's a Hollywood heat right there. And then there's a comet right there. And this one right here, that's a wet head. Captain Card. No. Card tricks? Card tricks. If anybody wants a card tricks, let me know. And we can rebuild that one for you. Um, with that, like I said, I'm gonna pound out the rest of this myself. Um let me see. You guys are my basement crusaders. 
we did a little poll on that. Um, everybody at Mark's Basement Arcade is now a Basement Crusader. Um, let me see. Channels I want you to check out are um, Dave's Arcade, Twitch, and YouTube. TurboGrafx7, which is on Twitch. He doesn't do much anymore. He does stuff once in a while. He had kids, so he's kind of like in the background right now. But I'm sure um, Ryan will be back. Um, check out Tanner Walters on uh, YouTube. And he's got a website too. He's the EM Mad Scientist. He does a lot of um, cool EM upgrades. Like the um, EM Scorekeeper, which you've seen on a couple of my machines. Um, check out Borg Dog. He's on Twitch and on YouTube. Let's get him over to YouTube. Um, Pinball Shenanigans. Uh, my brother from another mother up in Canada. Timball Wizard. He does a lot of TikTok. He needs to do more YouTube. Uh, Pinball Mayhem. Without them, I would not be here. So give a like and subscribe to Pinball Mayhem. Ed and Jeremy, two awesome fellows. Um, I think that's about that. And, um, will I be back Sunday? Let's look and see what we got going on. Hey! That sounds like my cousin Marvin. Um, yeah, probably. I don't see why not. Why we want to be back next Sunday. I can't see why not. But, um, so yeah, we'll do that. We'll, we'll plan on that. So, um, with that, I'll be back next Sunday at 2, and I'll have more pinball ideas for you, and you'll have things that you want to talk about, and I will, too. Take care, everybody. Um, happy Father's Day and um, all that cool stuff. And here's some swag if you want some swag. Here's the MGC link, which I'm going to talk about. And here's mine. MGC. Without them, I'm not here right now. You're only going to find me on YouTube. MGC is the world's largest gaming convention of its kind. It is, um, I don't know the dates. Go to Midwest Gaming Classic again, which is right there. Click on that, MidwestGamingClassic.com. Go to them and get the correct dates for 2024. It still has a 2023 on here, and I don't know it off the top of my head. World's largest gaming um, convention of its kind. It, every type of gaming you can think of is there. Um, role play, card, board, computer. Um, they got LARPers there. Uh, uh, arcade, console, pinball. Pinball, yeah, yeah, and they, yeah, it's, it's the biggest convention of its kind. Check them out, MidwestGamingClassic.com. Be there, be square. If you're on YouTube, there's gonna be some cool stuff right here. Give me a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to Mark's Basement Arcade. Um, give us a subscribe here or it's a follow. It doesn't cost you nothing to follow. If you want to subscribe, you can use your Amazon account if you have prime and do it for free and with that i will t talk to you later and happy father's day and take care everybody